Okay, welcome back. Thanks to everyone on Facebook for waiting. We're just waiting for councillors to get seated again. Next item on the agenda this evening is the Community Grants Review. And there's starts on page 176 of tonight's agenda. And there's a recommended motion on page 180. Looking for a mover of the recommended motion, if there is one. Councillor Cordover, second by Councillor Fox. Councillor Cordover. Thank you very much, Mayor. And what we're looking at here is the Community Grants Review. This Community Grants Program has been a core of the Community Services Program, supporting Kingborough-based activities and community groups for many years. And uh, long may that last. It's a terrific asset to the community, and the grants have become an anticipated funding opportunity that's assisted a range of sporting, cultural, service, uh, environmental and arts groups to achieve their aims. Now currently we're looking at uh, an allocation of $40,000 per year provided in council's budget to service two rounds of grants of $20,000 with a maximum grant amount of $3,000 each. I think it's worth noting here that because this is such an anticipated program and it is so important and the dividends that it pays to the community not just to the individual organisations, but to all of the people within the municipality whom these organisations service. It is worth noting that this current allocation of $40,000 in two tranches is actually significantly reduced from where it used to be. And in 2017 and 2018, the annual allocation dropped from 60000 to 50000 and the allocation dropped again in 2019-2020 to the current amount of $40,000. And so something that I take very seriously uh, in this role is to try and facilitate as best I can our community and to make sure that keeping the community at the heart of everything that we do, part of that is making sure that there's an adequate amount of funding for community initiatives. And so I would love to see in time uh, that community grant allocation funding amount uh, increased. So what we're looking at tonight is to um, basically adopt several recommendations in, in relation to the, to the grants program, which include um, holding the grant round annually rather than biannually, setting aside $5,000 from the $40,000 allocation for a quick response community assistance grant of up to $1,000 to be made available throughout the year, to retain the requirement for matching funds, whether in cash or in kind. However, if a community group can demonstrate or explain why they can't match the funding, um, then their application can still be considered. So what we've got at the moment is um, the requirement to be able to match or in kind in terms of volunteer hours or, or otherwise to prove that you can match that amount. But there are certain community organisations who under circum certain circumstances can't do that. And so this would provide greater flexibility. So I look forward to um, hearing tonight's debate around this very important issue. Um, and I also thought I would just give the opportunity um, if Miss Alder Fox is here, no, okay, never mind. So, I just want to thank Miss Alder Fox and um, the, our community development officer for um, for the community grants review, and I look forward to hearing the debate. Thanks, Councillor Mitchell. Just me, Mayor, might be able to answer is in regards to the um, venue support. So I understand it wasn't um, recommended to look at an, any sort of like venue support grant. However. We do actually um, waive a lot of fees and provide free venue for I don't know how many community groups amongst our municipality. Can I please be reminded how we actually capture this? Do we capture it in an annual report under a heading that states uh, venue support for community groups with an actual number? Um, do we name the different organisations and perhaps the grants or the fee waiving that were given, I see it as a grant, um, how do we actually capture that and I guess celebrate this is what we kind of give to the, give back to the community? Uh, through you Mayor, we would only capture the larger ones and, and particularly those that would come through say perhaps a mayoral donation towards the cost of hiring a venue on a lot of um, the waiving of fees is for a one or two hour hire where we're talking $13 an hour for example um, where we, we're currently not capturing that in a public sense we're capturing it um, within our central filing system um, but it's not that level of details not reported in the annual report um, 
larger one larger ones where they are identified as a specific grant would be but the general ones are not currently published in our annual report so further to that comment I think that we should capture it and even if it is only a small amount um, perhaps it is a continued kind of an amount and I think it's good to show that we do actually waive this fee and I do see it in a way as a grant so sorry that it might conflict with um, perhaps your thinking so I do um, actually have an amendment to put forward to add a G uh, and I have sent that to Ms Morton so I've sent two so not the waste one just the second one the G we can get rid of the first one thank you so, oh. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, oh, just, just a suggestion through you, Mayor. I think this issue is more relevant to our waiver of fees and charges policy than it is to the community grants policy because currently uh, Council has a policy under which we waive or reduce various fees and charges including venue charges and that policy would be the appropriate place to capture, I think, what you're trying to include here, which is not necessarily directly related to the community grant program. So just to remind me, did that policy come to Council recently? Because I'm quite sure I asked about this and then it was perhaps not really suggested. I can't remember what the outcome was, but I'm sure, because I have raised this point before, and it hasn't gone forward, and I don't think it even was able to be put forward in that policy when I mentioned it uh, there either. Through you, Mayor, the policy is due for renewal right now, I think. Oh, so it must probably be wouldn't have been reviewed for two years. Oh, excuse yeah. me, I'm very so, sorry about that. It must have been another one related. So, given it's coming up to Council soon, uh, Council Mitchell will have the ability to um, argue these points at a at a debate around that policy. Is that right? Uh, through you, Mayor, that would be my suggestion as to the most appropriate policy within which to capture the um, type of changes that Council Mitchell is looking for. Okay, I'm happy for that and most sincere apologies that I thought we'd discussed it um, recently because I know I have raised it before. Um, but, yeah, I'm happy. Thank you very much um, for reviewing um, the grant and it's great to see uh, that we do have some changes. It would be really interesting to have a look at the quick response um, community assistant of up to $1,000. Um, yeah, really exciting to kind of see who puts forward that and what sort of projects are there. And in regards to developing an online video to promote awareness and understanding of the grant program, um, that's fantastic as well. And I guess if we do um, have another significant amount of applicants as we did in the last round, then perhaps, and I, I really hope that we can consider that when we have our council um, budget deliberations. A point of um, clarification or something, Mayor, just before <laughs> Councillor Mitchell stops. I'm not sure if that's in the procedure. that's not a thing, you know. here's a procedural question. Um, is it not possible to, to still do Amendment G and or just to change, amend, yeah, to add a G that says amend the fee waiver policy to reflect those changes? I, I think the issue would be that it's, it's not listed specifically in the agenda. We haven't received any written advice, but the Acting General Manager might have. Uh, a different view. Happy to take your advice, Acting General Manager, or, or Mr. Smee, about the ability for us to add that G, given it relates to a different policy. Um, through, through you, Mayor, I'd, I'd take Mr. Smee's advice on that one. In the, always, as he stated previously, that it's, it's more appropriate that it be dealt with with the other policy than this particular policy. The other policy is in relation to the waiving of fees and charges, and the issue is about waiving and fees and charges. So, I, I think that's not really part of the community grants policy as such, um, I think that should be dealt with. So we're not, so we don't have um, different clauses in, in different policies, so that all the same subject material is in the one policy. Oh. <laughs> okay, um, lights on. Councillor Fox. Um, I was just going to suggest that a small amendment, uh, given we've talked a lot about the annual allocation, that if the motion in B was to set aside 12.5% of the annual allocation, that it would sort of future-proof the motion, because that 12.5% is 5,000, 
and that would mean that even in the future if we increased it to 50,000, actually I can't do the maths on that, but you know, you know what I'm trying to say, is that something we'd be interested in? We'd probably need someone to, actually I can suggest it to the mover in a second or I think. Okay. Um, Ms Morton, the suggestion is to change, um, set aside 5,000 to set aside 12.5%. And then the 40,000 would change the word annual. The mover and second are happy with that. They're both um, saying yes. Are there any further lights on for more, more contributions? Um, I just wanted to say that I know this year the allocation was, you know, we had way more recently. It was the last meeting, the meeting before we had almost twice as many uh, twice as much applications we had funding, but that hasn't always been the case. And I think one of the reasons why we've dropped the allocation is sometimes we've had rounds we just haven't had anywhere near the number of applications. Um, and it probably reflects financial circumstances and COVID certainly reflected this year. But it's not just an austerity measure that we've reduced it. It's been the fact that we haven't had demand for um, the grants. We probably are communicating the grants much better now and they're a lot of we're seeing a lot of frequent flyers in groups that are finding out about them and then applying every time, which is which is good. Um, but we, I agree with the sentiment that um, given the demand we've got for the program, we probably need to reassess the um, allocation in next year's budget. Um, that was all I had. So to sum up, Councillor Cordover. Thank you, Mayor. I think this has been a really productive and valuable debate and I am really elated um, with the Mayor's amendment and also the fact that that amendment to some extent um, indicates, hopefully, uh, an indication of appetite to increase the allocation. So I think this has just been a terrific, a terrific outcome if we can keep our, our eyes on that prize because, of course, um, as we've heard, these changes that we're implementing now will promote flexibility, efficiency, awareness improvements. But the elephant in the room, which I'm glad we've touched on tonight, is that we need to increase the allocation. And if we look to the community directions for Kingston as part of the PlayScore um, Kingston CBD review, one of the clear things that came out from the community engagement was, quote, we want an attractive and engaging public realm that encourages longer outdoor stays and social interaction. And the key platforms of those were things like quality public spaces, public art, more social cohesion, and those things come from a well-resourced community grants and community organisational uh, framework. Definitely new information that you're not allowed to include in the summary of the debate, Councillor Cordova. I will remove that. <laughs> yeah, I withdraw that uh, very pertinent information. Uh, so the allocations vary from 270. So if we look at places that are like Kingborough, we see that the allocations for community grants vary between $270,000 to $20,000. So that's a 4.6 in that report. And the maximum grant that that we're offering now is 3,000 and that's down from 5,000. So what I'm saying is that Kingborough really should be a leader and we can be a leader and the way to be a leader is to push the community grant allocation up towards, um, you know, as I say, the, the very top end of the figure there among like communities is 270,000 and we're sitting at 40. So um, there's a long way to go, but what a, terrific, um, what a terrific outcome that we can see this appetite around the, the council table tonight. Uh, and in this interim measure, uh, the Community Grants Review has provided opportunity to make the Community Grants Program more flexible, more efficient, uh, create awareness uh, improvements, and so I commend it to my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Cordover moved it and Councillor Fox seconded the motion, and it's that Council adopt the following recommendations in relation to the Community Grants Program. A, hold the grant round annually beginning of the 21-22 financial year. B, set aside 12.5% from the annual allocation for quick response community assistance. Grants up to $1,000 to be available throughout the year. The criteria for which will remain in line with the community grants program with a delegation provided to the Director of Environment, Development and Community to approve allocations. C, uh, retain the requirement for matching funds, whether in cash or in kind. However, if a community group can demonstrate or explain why matching funding cannot be provided, their application can be considered, still be considered. D, retain the current assessment process. E, develop an online video to promote awareness and understanding of the grant program. F, amend the community grants policy to reflect the above changes. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, motions carried unanimously. Next is the 